A lot of the girls would be doing favors for adult men that whether it's a father of their friend that would pick up the friend and then see the girl and be like, I'll give you $10 just to go get food or they'll just buy them meals or McDonald's or a plate. Hey friends, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now let's get into this video. So I just did a book club for Napoleon, Think and Grow Rich. As promised, I said I would talk about the five urges that ruined kings and powerful men throughout history that you need to master before it masters you. We all know about tyrants and successful people, even in movies, when we watch movies, someone gets successful and then they just become a little too cocky or something happens and they lose it all and you're like, bruh, this video is to tell you how to safeguard yourself from that and how you can avoid that. There are weaknesses as humans that we have and they control us. It almost seems like we have this animalistic attraction to these urges. <laughs> and if you do not regulate them, you will see that you get nothing done and your life is just ruined and you're not living your optimum self. The number one for me is appetite. It started with the Bible since the very beginning. Man fell because of a fruit. <laughs> appetite, gluttonous, oh, child, we struggle with it. So so many of us have health problems, we're not thinking straight, we're foggy, we're obese, we have parasites that are controlling our moods and emotions. That's another video if you guys want, comment below how I got rid of parasites that I had. And parasites don't just come from meat, it don't just come from meat, that's all I'm saying. So I had some parasites and I didn't even know and it affects your weight, your mood, every, oh, so much things, okay? But we get those from just bad eating habits. Not being able to control your appetite is a very bad thing. Food throughout history have been used, like you think about Jesus in the desert and how the enemy came to tempt him with food. Turn this bread into stone, you know, because appetite is such a big deal that even Esau gave up his birthright, okay? Am I preaching this to Maddie today? Yes, I am. Esau gave up his birthright to Jacob because he was so hungry, all he saw is food. Have you ever been so hungry that you'd give up your left leg for a slice of pizza or something or food just in general, okay? Most of you guys did not grow up in the struggle so you've never experienced hunger, kudos for you, so you don't know how intense it can get, okay? But when we first came from Haiti, it was a struggle, okay? So we would experience hunger, okay? We didn't experience it in Haiti, but I experienced it in America. Hunger is a great motivator. And even in the school that I went to, the high school that I went to, which was in a very poor area, most of the girls, the girls there that were 15 and under were giving top, if you guys know what I mean, doing things with even the adult teachers that would exploit them. Many of them have since gone to jail from this school I went to. Y'all can just look up teachers at Jones High School, okay? I'm just saying. I'm glad a lot of them got caught up with that, but a lot of the girls would be doing favors for adult men that, whether it's a father of their friend that would pick up the friend and then see the girl and be like, I'll give you $10 just to go get food, or they'll just buy them meals or McDonald's or a plate. And I'll tell you guys this story, even when I was in, a, thank God my dad, oh my goodness, I'll say this, it didn't matter how things was for us, my dad would muster up them five hours to get to me and my sister. Food was never a thing to make us lose our mind. <laughs> I tell you, girls was doing things for $5 to get a box of perm. I kid you not. It's the things that I witnessed. But I was on a soccer team in my high school and there was a coach that we got way later who was a male coach and he was also the reading teacher there. And my boyfriend at the time and his friends used to tell me, like something's off with that man. He's mm, he's a little too friendly with the girls and stuff. But on the soccer team, the girls are pretty. We were pretty, you know. But he used to, because I was in his English class also, he used to have all the girls he thought was so pretty and stuff like that after school while we wait for soccer practice, we'd all be in his classroom because we knew he would always bring food and he'd bring like Jamaican food, he'd bring Trinidadian food, like I because we were all Caribbean on the soccer team. It was a stereotype that, you know, the Haitians all played soccer, the Jamaicans, uh, Trinidadians, all, we all, played soccer so he'd get Haitian food one day whatever Jamaican food the other and we would just always have a feast while we wait and some girls were just always a little closer to him and I, I didn't get it but it was his way of and he would test out to see who is vulnerable who who was I know this TMI but I'm telling you why appetite is even for your young kids you should not let your kids 
I cannot stress this enough. Do not let your kids go hungry. Do not let them go hungry. Do not let them go hungry because so many people manipulate them with a happy meal or if it is in your power to give your kids a happy meal because it's as simple as that kids are very young their brains are so young like we we do not think clearly we do not see clearly we don't understand we don't have the same wisdom that you have so even if there's food at home but a kid all their friends have experienced the happy meal they've eaten the happy meal or had the lunchables or whatever they've never experienced it mom and dad never wants to you know whatever at least once let your kid have a happy meal let them experience that because there's adults with something as simple as that can do a lot to your kids okay and i'm not trying to fear monger or anything like that but i done seen some things in my life okay 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 but he would see who had parents that were actually involved in their kids lives by dropping kids home or you know being extra involved in getting them things and thankfully for me <sighs> Though my dad was working a lot, my uncles, all that stuff. It's just, I had, I just was, my boyfriend was always walking me home from school. We just, I, I just didn't, you know, but I, I, he would try. And there were conversations I knew was not appropriate that he would have with some of my friends and he would try to have with me. And after a while, I was like, yeah, I'm done going to this man's classroom. I'll wait for soccer practice somewhere else, okay? And then come to find out, he's since been arrested, <laughs> went to jail for it just disgusting but appetite even for the youngest it's like a, a need like for food oh my goodness when a woman wants to manipulate a man they say in the belly listen she'll make his favorite meal woo him entice him what does he want to eat like listen food is so powerful you must conquer your appetite me right now what time is it it is 5 34 i have not eaten yet and i've been up since 9 a.m it is 5 34 p.m i have not eaten yet and i'll go through days where i'll fast like that i'll i won't eat for a day sometimes and i know people are like oh it's not healthy no it's i have conditions health conditions where that's actually necessary for me and so me fasting it has helped me to conquer food like people can eat around me the most my favorite foods and i conquered them there are certain foods that i've left out since cleansing my body that i now back then i wouldn't have the strength to, to like i'd want it <laughs> but now it's like no i've conquered this i don't need to eat this i i'll throw away the snacks this that and a third from me and i've been better but it had to take health crisis for me to get to that point and a lot of us it is like that and we will continue to be at those point if we do not conquer our appetite so conquer your appetite okay number two is the sensual urges and need for companion how many athletes do you see lose it all now they have babies they got to play child support for women that come and take everything from them or superstars or whatever they fall from beautiful women big butts and stuff they get blinded a lot of men's motivation to become rich or have money is rooted in how many girls they can bed look at all the red pillars you know a lot of it is rooted in a lot of their bitterness come from women that they can't bed they just want to bed and a lot of their drive to be successful is from spilling their seed that's what they want to do okay and it's not just men it's women also a lot of us the need of companionship make in love to be loved makes you go and give your fruit to whoever wants to take a bite and you must conquer that okay and napoleon hill even said in his book think and grow rich that the man who focuses on just sensual you know urges and fulfilling them seldom accomplishes anything it's a weakness and you must conquer this weakness throughout history there's been kingdoms that fell because of women troy is a story that people think is just all fictional and stuff like that you don't know how many kingdoms fell the fall of man came from a woman adam loved eve so much that he didn't eat of the fruit because oh the fruit tempted him he knew the fruit he wasn't tempted by it eve was because she had a weakness that you know the enemy capitalized of adam ate the fruit because he loved her so much and he knew the wages of sin was death and that eve will die because she ate the fruit and because he could not fathom living without her he ate the fruit too okay okay so love is that powerful that that love that connection the sensual urges the need to release has a lot of people in a chokehold they just it consumes their life it does everything this is why you have corn addiction and you guys know what i mean by corn because youtube is childish and they don't like people having real conversations using real terms so we're going to call them corn but corn addiction that's where it stems from okay that's why you have a lot of people that can't control their urges even it's an illness it's a sickness for some that take it to the extreme and that they violate people and take their innocence without their 
you know, consent. Let's just say that. So mastering that, you master yourself as an adult, as a person. Next is the need for wealth, money, excess money, right? Conquering that, okay? Some people don't have an end to a mean. They, they don't know when to stop. They chase money so much that oftentimes we see a lot of people that are at the top that are super wealthy. We say, they say billionaires don't get to where they get to being good person. I, it's a quote, I forgot who said it. There's never, there's never been a billionaire that just got there by not doing some shady things, right? Uh, could it be possible? Probably, yes, in the future. It's probably possible to acquire a lot of wealth and be a good person and not, you know, trample a lot of people but it's very rare, very rare. And the need for wealth will make people sell their souls <laughs> in a sense. And selling your soul is not literally taking your soul and selling it, but compromising your morals and things you said you would never do because of the fear of poverty, you know, to get money. I'm not saying do not seek money or, you know, have money come to you. I'm not saying that, but it can corrupt even the best of people. Next is the need for power, which is the fall of the universe, the need to be powerful and admired. <laughs> A lot of people need to have total and complete power. That's where you have dictators and tyrants and people that just wreak havoc on the earth, want to control everything and want to be at the top. The need to be at the top, to be the most powerful, to be the most prolific. And you'll see a lot of people that they obtain a certain level in life and you think they would be content, but they're not. They still keep going for more and it becomes their downfall. It becomes their destruction. In movies, we see it all the time. Like, why didn't he just stop? Like, man, if he just stopped at this point, if he didn't get overly ambitious, he could have been great. Why did you have to keep going? <laughs> I watch a lot of crime shows where I'm just like, this is your but why couldn't you be satisfied? But it it becomes addicting. Power, wealth, it becomes addicting. It becomes addicting. And you always will want more. So you have to manage those, you know, even the excess of women. Some men, it becomes addicting to bed women, bed women. And they don't stop until they get a disease, until they die or, you know, until it starts happening to their daughters <laughs> even. But there's a lot of men I know that used to be hot, hot, hot in these streets and a disease calmed them all the way down. And it shouldn't have to, to get to this point. Learn and know when to quit, when to stop. Last is the need to be desired. Beauty, which is my favorite, to be desired, to be seen as beautiful, you know, vanity, vanity, darling. Everyone wants to look beautiful. I mean, the beauty industry is one of the most prolific industry there is out there. You can destroy yourself. There's so many fables, stories, uh, movies, books written, like this topic of just the vanity of it all, where people have come to ruin because of their own narcissism, their own self-love, their own vanity, and you must conquer that. Beauty is not everything. I say that. Uh, aesthetics for body. Like, we how many bodybuilders whose arms exploded because they wanted this specific aesthetic and they kept just injecting until the arm literally did explode or break their backs. They can't walk. They need crutches now. I've been watching them documentaries. I've been seeing them people talking. I'm like, wow. Or women that we know, they're chasing this aesthetic of beauty. They cut up their bodies in so many different ways to where it becomes hazard they grow you've ever seen someone just used to be so beautiful on my other channel where i do breakdowns for celebrities i'll start when they're really young their face is so full and plump their body is so you know natural and soft and you know in the beginning and then over time you start to see when they start to get so much work done that oh my goodness that little soft face is now bony they done remove their buccal fat and they now look like a shell of themselves their nose is disfigured or they did something with their bodies where they just lost too much weight and they almost look sickly or they put too much injections in they look out of shape and then they don't see it because the need to be i feel like vanity is a need to be desired respect uh, accepted it's like you, you feel and it's a it's a thing with insecurity and we all get insecure there's things i used to be insecure about that i'm like i'm changing i'm changing when i get older i have money i'm doing surgery on but thank god you know as i got older i i learned the power of mastering your confidence and having your self-confidence for you loving yourself truly a lot of people preach about loving themselves but they don't love themselves and it shows in their actions to where it's like i'm not gonna do this to myself and it's hard in this day and age when it is the norm to have a uh, every this one aesthetic and it's very tempting especially if you're here like me on youtube you your face is like 
out there all the time you're talking to people you're looking at yourself a lot you want to look your best you want to uh you know do what you can to look your best the pressure is on but it gets very tempting right but a lot of people lose their lives on the operating table a lot of people disfigure themselves unrecognizable and they don't realize it until it's too late all because of the insecurities and not really working on loving themselves really not doing the work going to therapy and speaking up to your therapist i always say a therapist can only help you as far as how much you're honest about i used to go to therapy and not talk about certain things i come in for specific things and do that and it's like don't do that be as honest as possible because you only will get the help as far as how honest you are okay if you feel jealous of people or envy or you feel less than there's things that are insecure talk about it before it's too late and conquer that because a lot of times some people will reach the mountaintops get all the money that they ever desired and then they're gone too soon because dying on the operating table what a way to go once you reach the success that you were waiting for or they're chasing youth you know so they're drinking these potions or going to yeah, there's this billionaire i was watching a documentary on, and then she went to this um it's like a, a retreat where and overseas you know in those guru places and they give them these elixirs these things that like supposed to make you useful from the inside and it shows on the outside and stuff ruined her can't even think the way she used to think oh i gotta think of the name of that uh documentary but i've i've just witnessed how a lot of people fall also from beauty from from beauty from other people's beauty like we are a society that put beauty and pretty privilege to such high esteem that we allow beautiful people to manipulate us to use us to get to us we fall in love with the outside of a person and we forget that outside may be pretty but inside is dark and yeah the minute that you start to understand that beauty is not everything and i must conquer that you will start to see people for who they are inside too beauty like those things like somebody being just a little like their body is not the body type that you like or maybe their face they're this and that all of those things won't matter once you accept yourself the reason we hold people like we look at face and all of those external things there's been so many people that would not be seen as conventionally attractive that are very attractive to me and people who have worked on their self-love because now you're seeing the intelligence of the person how they speak and just what conversation <laughs> Nothing is sexier to me than conversation, okay? I tell you. who a good conversation, a sound, wise, collected, put together, no emotional, sound man, just talking, making his point without being irrational, <laughs> healed. Oh my goodness, okay? You could overlook a lot of things just from that alone, okay? And it's attractive, but I wouldn't have gotten to this point where you're like, oh, you gotta be six feet tall, make this, that, all that is, mm. You wouldn't get to that point if you didn't love yourself, okay? And typically, yeah, it doesn't mean settling for less, but a lot of you guys are dating bums because they look good and they got you on the outside. You're dating someone that would not be a good father or would not be a good husband because you were looking on the outside. But when you look at those factors first and you let those attract you and it makes a man, there's a lot of things you will ignore. Same for women. A lot of y'all miss out on great women because you're chasing a baddie, you know, and you miss out on the woman that would have helped you through your sickness for better or for worse to look after your children be a good mother a homemaker because you're chasing an aesthetic okay so everybody's guilty of that and because society knows that people chase aesthetics we mutilate ourselves we do things to ourselves instead of just being our best healthy stuff self working on things there's so many times so many things i could have done to reach the goal physically that i want and i have the resources for it but it's like, I'm not gonna, I just, God constantly reminds me, do things this way instead. Don't mutilate yourself, you know? Pray about everything you're doing. Don't be influenced by that. I know there's a lot of people we look up to that we see as our big sisters, our big brothers online and stuff. And then once we see them change themselves or take a drastic measure to change themselves, we're like, okay, if this person does it, then maybe I, you, don't, don't be influenced by these people. Have your own identity. Don't let these urges consume you. You know, be yourself. That's my message to you because I used to be like that. The person I look up to somebody and then they'll do something and that I say I'll never do and then because they do it you kind of start to you know and then they promote it and you're like wow you know so then you see everybody start to follow those trends please have your own identity love yourself and be careful conquer your appetite okay conquer your lust don't be letting your need to feel lonely you know get you into look at Samson and Delilah 
just the need of companionship like conquer that okay be at one with yourself hang out with yourself and be at peace with that okay don't let your need for that ruin you conquer your need for power you don't need to be at the top you don't you don't just be the best you that you could be without having to be the best <laughs> and as far as beauty you are beautiful to someone you are desired to someone you don't need to do anything to chase this unrealistic goals okay you will always be chasing you will never be satisfied if it's not one thing you'll be another don't make your beauty your priority okay i love you guys so much if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description comment below what are your thoughts give other tips also what do you think about this i love you guys so much until next time Mwah.